Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? It's Scurvishman. Today we are going to go over five different types of trap accounts in Lord's Mobile. Uh, those are the Griffin Trap, the Solo Trap, the Garrison Trap, a Reinforcement Rally Trap, and then what is kind of working as a Rally Trap. Now, of course, I know some people out there have been kind of curious as to, like, how does a trap work in general? And to answer your question, uh, every trap out there right now should be countering the troops that are sent to it. So, like, if cavalry is coming at it, they should probably be in range. Right Now, whether that's a range wedge or range phalanx is dependent on what front lines they want to use in the front. And I, I say this, right, because it reads right to left when you look at the phalanx or the wedge. Uh, because if you were to think of it like, you know, siege is always in the back. Uh, but the thing is, is with the right to left mindset, you, you basically have to think that if I've got infantry, you know, the next thing that comes by, you know, if I was trying to use like a cav wedge to block infantry, uh, you know, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, do you want your front line to be cavalry? And if so, is it the largest cavalry uh, amount? You know, like, is it, you know, are you working with like a little bit or are you working with a lot? A lot of these things you have to ask yourself, um, you know, and it really does depend. But basically all wedges are going to do is change the format of what troops you have. So some traps out there will build just two types as opposed to all three for might reasons. I would say that the major drawback from that is that they're not that effective. And a lot of these same people are drawing on the idea that by having the less amount of light, you know, the fewer amount of might I can have on my account, the better. And so, you know, they keep all the research quests, my vice versa, to the bare minimum, you know, where it's, yeah, it, it's effective, right? But the, the one thing that you have to keep in mind about it is that, yes, that means you're easily going to get rallied. You're going to very easily get hit if you were you know, if you were a solo. But these things, although they sound great on paper, they're not necessarily needed because really these are tactics more than they are anything else. But this is why we call them traps, because they're low on might. Now, what I'm going to be really telling you is really more their tactics, really, than anything else. And that means that, really, regardless of what might you are, uh, whether you're 400 million to 800 million to a billion, 2 billion, a lot of these concepts will apply and work just well in any type of defense. Now, of course, uh, something that does get asked pretty frequently is, well, what kind of gear do I need? What kind of mix set do I need to use? And I think this varies from person to person. You know, it depends on what you want to be able to build and what you can afford. Um, I can tell you that, you know, the, a lot of, a lot of people that are like baby traps and they're just starting out and they're just building a solo trap, for example, um, you know, those guys are usually kicking around a million tier two. Okay. And I say a million tier two and probably one or two, or maybe even all three front lines. Now, why that works is because if you're sending 375,000 tier three, that's going to cap it pretty easy. But if you're using something like uh, Tier 4, for example, it's going to fall flat. And then that's where you have to go from a million to two million. And then you have two million across. But obviously, you know, the, do you absolutely need to have two million across? No, you could have two million in two types, and then you can fill the rest up with six million in Tier 1, right? That's a pretty common solo trap build right now. And because it works so well, most people don't think anything of it. But one thing that almost holds true with all of the people that are doing these two type sets is that a lot of the time their stats are around 300 percent or higher when it comes to their attack stats and what they're usually trying to do right is instead of trying to go mix right you're starting to realize that instead of just you know trying to even blend what they're doing is they're actually increasing two types okay now this makes a lot of sense if you think about it because when you try to do your gear sets and you try to blend it between all three you're going to even yourself out where they're not as effective as they could be Obviously, if you had a one type set, right, and you're doing five, six hundred percent into one unit set, it makes a pretty good case against the defense. Like, it works really well because you're getting a lot of HP, a lot of defense, and a lot of attack to one unit type because your gear is oriented towards it. But the problem is, is obviously it's very easily countered, you know. So if you were happen to be all cavalry gear and you're going to get hit by range, you are SOL. You are now going to have to have another set in order to counter that, which means it's expensive to have one type sets. 
but it's the most effective route. <laughs> Um, but otherwise, most traps that are starting out will do a two-type set, and so for that reason, you know, they're putting about 300% or higher into those stats. Now, that's necessarily everything, right? You don't necessarily need to have 300%. It's more of an optimization at best, because really what matters is the composition. Now, to start with the compositions, right, for a griffin trap, okay, a griffin trap can have anywhere from 400,000 tier 4 across, to 500,000 tier 4 across. And then they can put a little bit of buffer if they want, and if they do, they can use like tier 2 and put like a few hundred K in there. You know, can go from 100 to 300 K, you know, whatever their infirm is really, because the idea is to try to avoid taking reds if you do take reds. And it's very, like the risk on a Griffin Trap is mild, you know, it's not like you're gonna take a lot of losses, but I've been telling people about this for quite a while now, but if I tell you these three traps that are coming up here pretty soon, okay, a griffin, a solo, and a garrison trap. What's unique to, a, to these traps is they do a ton of damage to one player, meaning that you can take literally millions of tier 4 from one person, which makes them very, very deadly for this reason, okay? As opposed to a rally trap and a rain trap, where they're usually taking rallies, and that rally is getting d divided up by multiple different people at a time. And depending on what kind of rally you're taking and vice versa, you could be taking multiple rallies from different guilds at a time. Anyway, the point is, is obviously with a Griffin Trap, you've got to be able to have the Griffin ability, which is Homeward Bind. Um, the, if you have it maxed out, that's best, uh, because you'll be able to pull your troops back in 6 seconds, which is ideal, and then you can pull every 30 minutes. Now, one thing that is um, kind of ideal for a Griffin Trap is, a lot of the time they're building up on the idea that if I have a ton of resources... I'm probably a bank, and an outsider player is going to go, hey, that's a bank. And what a Griffin Trap's done, really, is they've uh, reinforced or they've garrisoned castles around them and shielded castles. And so they emptied themselves out, including their leader, including all of their you know, familiars, all their wall heroes and all of that. And they look like an empty target. And people go, hey, there's nothing in here but a ton of resources. It looks like a bank. I'm going to go solo that with Tier 4 or Tier 2 if they're smart. Um, now, of course, I am going to teach you how to crack these traps a little bit, just because I feel like you should probably know what you should do rather than what you should not do, okay? But basically, with a Griffin Trap, you're going to be picking heroes like Death Knight, Child of Light, or Rose Knight, and then you'll pair it up with probably heroes like Bomb and Goblin and Sage of Storms. The idea is that you want to put four of those heroes to be cavalry, because ideally you want the squad attack from those heroes. And I say this because... For the most part, a griffin trap is probably going to hit infantry most of the time, because most people are going to try and gather with infantry because it has the highest army capacity. Now, if you're trying to counter a griffin trap, all right, one thing you can do is actually just send all range marches at it, and really the only other option a griffin trap would have at that point is they'd have to frontline an infantry with the risk and vault associated with it. Now, although just like a solo trap, you know, there is a capping point. Obviously, at some point, if somebody sent all their leaders, and it was all range, there is in fact a capping point. But very rarely this happens with a griffin trap, because they have control over which marches they want to eat. And I say that because a lot of the time with like a garrison trap, you can see what the marches are doing and coming when they're coming at you. And this holds true with a griffin trap, and that's why a griffin trap works really well. And for that reason, you know, if you port onto an island and you just wait until all these marches are coming, like maybe you get five or six at a time from one person, and then you're random, you're going to get a ton of kills really, really quickly when you've pulled all your troops and then randomed. But the thing is, is obviously when it comes to gear, I would recommend increasing your cav gear and increase HP, defense, and attack. And your talents should probably focus on that too. Now, there's no harm in doing like a cav wedge, for example, with a griffin trap, in which case then you would be doing your uh, damage in infantry and cavalry to kind of bonus that up. And there's no harm in that really otherwise i would stick in a cav phalanx with a griffin trap because there's not really much reason to go into other phalanxes unless like i told you earlier unless for some reason you want to deal with somebody that's sending a different unit type in which case yeah you can in theory use an infantry phalanx and use infantry or range and vice versa there's no harm in that um but obviously the rule applies for the composition in, the, in much the same way now, a solo trap is kind of, um, again, it's, a, it's more of a thing for a solo trap. It's more of like a beginner thing. A griffin trap is more of a mid-game thing because you got to get the familiar ability, and it takes some time, and then you can only do it every 30 minutes. If a solo trap is done well, right, 
and especially if it's you know, if you're just starting out, uh, the risk is obviously mild. You know, you're going to deal with people that are going to send solos at you and, and rampancy. You know, you're going to get two, three, four people trying to send a solo at you at the same time. And so, with a solo trap, it is mildly risky. You know, you you can fall flat on your face pretty easy if you're not paying attention. But for the most part. Like all traps, I would say you probably should have at least 100 million uh, in bagged resources, so that way you can heal as needed, and that's really the idea behind it. So, like a solo trap, um, you know, can easily have the flexibility to take as many marches as they please. That's a, one major difference between a griffin trap, is that a griffin trap can only do it every 30 minutes, but a solo trap can do it as many times as they wish. Now, one problem with that is obviously solo traps really depend on somebody to solo them, and that means their might needs to be really low. Um, and and what I mean by low, I mean technically they should probably be below 100 mil. But some people are right at the 100 mil mark, and I can say that really what makes the difference is you know did you soak up and eat all your researches and have you built up a lot of research might chances are you're probably going to have a hard time getting soloed. Uh, but it's not impossible. It's just if you're wanting some tips on that, I would suggest that you put yourself out there with, you know, hardly, uh, you know, obviously a lot of solo traps are anti scattered but something that holds true between these three types of traps is that they should never ever get in Fury for any reason. Unless they're just batshit and they want to get zeroed, then you, that's kind of the ultimate end up result with these kind of traps. And that holds up for a Griffin trap, a solo trap, and a garrison trap. The benefit that they have on their side, though, is as long as they don't get in Fury, they're okay. Except for garrison traps, which that risk is guaranteed for the guy that's garrisoning. Like, that's that much he's going to take a risk on. But the benefit of a garrison trap is that if you're just small enough and you can hide your troops, it works great. Anyway, so the point is, with a solo trap, you're going to do 2 million tier 2 in infantry and cavalry, chances are. And then you want to do 5 to 6 million tier 1 archers. Works okay, it's not really that big of a deal as long as you stay in infantry and calf phalanx. If you go in range phalanx, it's probably going to hurt like hell, but uh, <laughs> I say that because that that is probably the only time where I feel like, you know, if, if you're going to take a, a, like a, like a solo march, I mean, yeah, you probably could try, but I would not do it if it were me. Um, I tried doing my solo uh, trap not too long ago, and it, it really falls flat pretty easy against mythic players. Um, so one thing I will say about just about any of these traps is that against the top tier players like Mythic Champion and all of the max F familiars and all that stuff, is the mechanics have changed a slight bit, and that I'll get into and towards the later end of the video when it got regards rally traps, but really the the thing is is like if you're gonna do a solo trap, for example, you probably need to have your infirmaries maxed out, which means that you should probably have six hundred thousand for an infirm. Um, in terms of the total size that you can heal, because chances are you're going to fill your beds up pretty fast. Um, obviously, you know, because you have Tier 2, and they're not like, you know, Tier 1 where they just pop really fast to heal, you're going to have, a lot of the time, you're going to have to gem it. And that's anywhere from fifteen to 2,000 gems to heal every time, which is not cheap. You know, obviously, you can burn gems like fire doing this. Um, but this is why this trap... It's so popular. I mean, it's really not... The, the bar to entry to it is really small. A griffin trap's, like, mildly expensive. You know, it's it's probably a few hundred dollars in troops, assuming you don't have, like, top-tier training speed and stuff like that. A solo trap's probably a lot less on that. You know, it's it's a little bit more easier to build, and it takes a little bit of time. I and mean, regardless of what you're trading it for, whether that's money or time, that's really the main wall to entry to it, but... Otherwise, really, the only thing that I notice with a lot of solo traps is they're trying to blend or even out between two unit types. So they'll do infantry and cavalry for their squad leaders between the four to five leaders that they have. Trying to always focus on that, but not you know, like too much. And they usually have one hero dedicated to the other type, like range, so that they're not having to worry about it. Um, but that's pretty much the gist with a solo trap for the most part. Is that's that's how they work. Obviously, like I was telling you earlier, you can just do a million tier two to defend against uh, three hundred seventy-five thousand tier three. Works all the same. Um, but of course, when it comes to stats, you know, two hundred and fifty to three hundred is ideal. Okay, it's really on uh, when it comes to two fifty to three hundred. I'm referring to the attack stat for infantry range and cavalry. In case you're wondering. Now, garrison traps are kind of a mid to late game thing. Uh, it's Risk is kind of mild to high. It depends on what you're going to deal with. Um, garrison traps fall flat if they get hit by range and you're sending cavalry. Basically, if you get countered, that's that's the stopping point for a garrison trap. 
but a garrison trap basically what they are is essentially you take two castles okay one castle is one i'm going to describe as the garrison castle this castle has a ton of resources on it has no troops it might have a leader but you probably chances are you're probably not going to have a leader it needs to have its watchtower up to 23 and it probably needs to have scout reports up to 10. i say that because that gives you the advantage of being able to scout around with it and essentially infuriate people to hell and then look like a bank and be an easy target. Now, the garrison target should probably have enough troops to hide. So if you've got like five armies, do five times 375k, and you're getting eh, roughly about a mil and a half in terms of what you should have in troops. Otherwise, you cannot hide it. Now, the problem with this is, is that when you send a garrison, you're going to be in fury. So people that are doing garrisons are going to be the target, and they have to be careful, okay? So if you're like a rally trap and you've got enough troops, this is okay, but not ideal because if you're in fury, chances are you can get hurt. This is one weary thing you got to be with the garrison trap. Now for the trap composition, essentially all the garrison needs to be is 324,000 tier 4, and then you want a buffer of 50,000 tier 3. In this case, I would send 324,000 uh, tier 4 cavalry with 50,000 tier 3 cavalry to be sent to the garrison castle. Now, I usually like to go all cav stats, so I buff my cav HP, my cav attack, using 300% or higher for the cav you know, attack stat as much as possible. And then, uh, you know, for the resources on the garrison castle, I want to go above 100 million if I can to bait people to actually attack it. And then what you do is basically, as the garrison guy, the guy that's sending the garrison, you send that first before you random on your garrison castle, and I'll explain that here in a second, but essentially what you do is the garrison castle is probably going to go around scout and piss a bunch of people off. They're going to start attacking it, okay? And then what essentially you need to do is you send your garrison to that castle. Every march that comes after the garrison, okay, will be able to get eaten when the ca garrison castle randoms. It's very important that you hear me when I say this, because what I'm saying is, is that the at one use in the garrison, okay, every march before it does not count. So if I've got five marches and I send a garrison onto my garrison castle, but the five marches that are trying to attack the garrison castle, okay, are already launched, those five marches will hit the castle before I, ran, like when I random, they will hit first and then my garrison will land. Okay, so you want to make sure that when you send your garrison that all five marches come after it in that case, right? Because that what that means is that essentially when I random, the garrison will land first and then all five marches will come in. And that's how the garrison trap works. Okay, now, of course, like I was saying earlier, you know, I would go Cav Wedge or Cav Phalanx uh, for this reason because chances are they're probably infantry. Easy peasy kind of thing. Works very similar to a Griffin Trap. Uh, the only major stipulation would be that, you know, where a griffin trap and a solar trap have enough troops to block off a uh, range march, a garrison trap does not. You can get capped very, very easy doing this. Um, so just be weary of that. Like, you will get capped pretty damn hard if you do a garrison trap. So just a word of warning. That's the only major difference between the other traps. Now... We're going to talk about reinforcement rally traps. Now, I kind of follow rain traps as a late game kind of thing. Um, not too long ago, we had a video with Ryan, and I'm sure some of you guys saw that you know, he had 6 to 7 million, roughly, of Tier 2 frontline. Now, the thing is, right, is that if you only got six to 700,000 Tier 4, you have one of two options with a, like, with a rain trap, okay? Which is that you can have six to 700,000 Tier 4, with 2 million tier 2 in the front line and two types or three types if that's what you want to do but the one thing you have to make sure is is that you're going to get reinforcements in tier 2 now some people like to get reinforcements in tier 4 and that works fine uh, I think it works great on people that are like mid par but the thing is is that when you're dealing with somebody that's a mythic champion a lot of the time at least in my experience from what I can tell is that the mechanics have shifted. So now what happens is the major familiar abilities are going to hit the largest squad, which means that if you have like six, seven plus million tier two, you're going to lose reds no matter what you do. Like you're going to lose reds. Now, I think one thing that you can do to counteract that is you can build siege, for example. And as long as the siege is higher than all your other troop types, in theory, 
what would happen is that the abilities themselves that are taking red damage are going to hit those tier 2 siege, for example, or tier 1 siege, depends on what you want to do, but the idea would be that then that ability is going to hit the siege, and therefore, yes, you're going to take reds, but you're going to take reds on siege, in theory, right? But obviously, well, how well does that actually work? Well, you know, the thing about sieges is, is that it gets countered by every single unit type in the game. And so for those of you out there that are wondering, you know, should I use Siege? I don't think it'll work. And I say that because although in theory, yeah, it would probably work, it doesn't really work so great. What you really have to do, and this is really the weird trick to it, okay, is that a lot of these abilities are specific to the front line, right? So if somebody sends, like, cavalry, right, and they're using a cav rally, then these cav familiars are going to hit the largest enemy squad with cav attack, okay? So, ideally, <laughs> what troop type does Cav Attack not do very much damage on? Range. So, the only alternative option that you have to make a Cav Rally fall flat is to use range and have a larger range squad. Okay, so that, that is why people that are using a small front line of Tier 2 with a large portion of Tier 4, it, they're doing it for that reason. Okay, um, and it works pretty well for that reason because... Well, it, basically, by putting your Tier 4 above, not only do you have the core front line, so, like, if you just had a pure 2 million plus Tier 4 front line with 2 million uh, total right in that front line, then if every other Tier 2 front line in front of you is smaller than that, then you will be able to soak without uh, actually taking reds because what you can do is you can get a million plus reinforcements of Tier 2 into that one unit type, if it's possible. If not, you can always take Nyx, but then you're doing like 250k across at 1.25, and you could probably take Rats for that reason. So I, I, you know, obviously with a little bit of room for mistakes, right? Um, that, that this is why I say that a lot of the time, if I was going to take reinforcements in those situations as a rain trap, a million tier two in one type makes a lot more sense than a 250k split or maybe even 500k between two unit types makes a little bit more sense for that purpose because it, the idea is to mitigate the damage not really so much soak it all the way across now i mean that isn't to say however though that you can't get away with like doing a little bit higher than 250 you can do like mixtures that are more pertain to whatever it is that you're doing like for example one rain trap that i see that's working fairly well is the guys using like six to seven hundred thousand tier four uh, between two unit types, but then he puts in 1.6 million range. Now, I think part of the reason why that works so well is like I was telling you earlier, the mechanics aid that guy considerably. But interestingly enough, right, is that the front lines are two million tier two on the sides. So if he gets hit, he swaps to range phalanx and cav is coming. Cav damage hits the cav, you know, the range, and then because it's the large portion, it's a tier 4 front line. It doesn't take damage as easily, and because he gets a million rains on top of that, it's the largest squad, so it freaking limits that cav rally to where it does not do it any damage, okay? And that's, I think, kind of the idea behind what you want to do with your rain trap, okay? Is that you want to take a million plus reinforcements to be able to counteract those new familiars as much as possible okay and that's really what i would recommend um so like if you're going to do six or seven million tier two then you probably need to have you know a, a really large chunk of troops somewhere to counteract the front line that they're sending so if you're going to have like six or seven million tier two across for example then really your alternatives all right is that if somebody sends range at you, chances are you're probably going to want to make one of your squads really large. Now, I think something that uh, some people do make a mistake with is the squad attack, and I, I've been saying this a lot here lately, but, like, squad attack's pretty fundamental. Like, if you can swap your leaders in time, that's ideal. Like, if you can get infantry range, cavalry, if, let's say, you know the rally's cav, in an ideal world, it actually makes a lot of sense that if somebody sends cav at you, Put all your wall heroes range heroes like as fast as you can because you're going to get a ton of squad damage. And that squad damage is pretty damn important. Like, 
a lot of squad damage is really, really good. Like, this is why I think Pyrese is really good. Um, Terra Spike and uh, even getting, like, Magma Lord and Jazik are really good because they're dropping the frontline HP by a lot. It's, like, 40% when it's maxed out. But also, 60% in squad attack is added to all the heroes with Pyrus. And they're all at the start of the battle, which makes them really, really, really good. Um, and so, for that reason, I feel like a lot of people that are doing a rain trap, you need to put that into your... You, as soon as possible. If you're going to deal with Mythic Trap, I think that's just a fundamental thing you need to have if you're going to do it. Okay? I think for rain trapping and rally trapping, 350% across in attack stats is like the bare minimum. But just like I was telling you earlier, you know, if you want to cut down on might, you can do two types, and then you can buff up your, uh, you know, the amount of stats you have in those two types, and that's perfectly fine. But the one problem you're going to have is, so in those two types, and you know, let's say you don't have any range, for example, you become a pretty easy rally target. Because cav on cav against somebody with 900% attack on a cav on cav march is going to win every damn time. Like, even though it's the same unit type, and yeah, it'll, it can potentially block or mitigate to some extent, it's still going to suck. <laughs> I'm just saying that now. It's not like the most ideal situation. You always want to be in counter, is what I'm trying to say here. That That's the best ideal situation to be, because you're being a, you're going to be able to kill those troops fast. Okay, but when you hit same on same type, okay, that's more time for those large four second, you know, 150% attack familiars to keep going. Which means that they can do more damage, and eventually they they will win, for that reason. Okay, so I'm, that's the only thing with two types. I, I think if you're gonna take like a triple rally, and you know that they're trying to counter you, which is to say that you know if if your infantry in range, for example, and they're sending calves, that's okay. If they're sending range, that's bad. I wouldn't try to eat a range march if I didn't have to. <laughs> Uh, and if it's infantry, okay, I would stay the hell away from that too, for much the same reason. Like a range march is fine, you can eat that in infantry, but the range march is the one that I'm telling you about, that like you don't have a counter for it in that situation, so you don't want to do that. Uh, anyway, th that, that's kind of the gist, at least with the rules that I'm trying to get get across here, okay? I know some of you guys are probably thinking, you know, like, all right, so really, what are you trying to say there? I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is, is that if, if you're going to hit troop on troop, you know, same unit type, the best thing you can do in those situations, then, is to drop their HP, if you can. Okay, so, you know, if, let's say it's cav, then you want to drop the cav HP. You want to drop the cav defense. You want to try, if you can, try to drop um, as much damage as you can possible to that front line. It's really the most ideal thing you can do. And really, in theory, I what I would do almost is, uh, if let's say you just had a little bit of range, right? You know, if you look at what troop type comes next in the front line, and maybe it's the same unit type, but you know range is gonna counter it, do that, and you'll be surprised, because what'll happen is the range is gonna counter, that's going to do some damage, and then they're going to hit the same unit type, and that's going to do really well for you for that reason, okay? So, like, in those situations, that's ideal. Like, that's what I would do, okay? And that's why, you know, if you're going to choose between a wedge and a phalanx, cav phalanx, for example, that's kind of how I make that mindset. Like, how I know when to use what and how I use it for that reason. Um, now, to get kind of into a rally trap, rally traps are kind of hard to do nowadays, and I, I kind of quit doing it because it's expensive, and I say this because it's like 20 bucks for 50 plus days worth of speeds. It takes kind of like close to a couple hundred days. It's like 250, right? Just to get like a couple uh, mil across. It's it's like mildly expensive. It's like 20, it's probably close to 100, 200 bucks. And troops, if you're not spending, <laughs> it takes a long time, okay? And I, and I say that because I've known people who have played the, gear for, the game for literally about a year. And that to getting to that kind of tier 4, they can barely get there. Like, I don't think it's possible. I really think hey, if you're going to do a rally trap, you have to be spending to do that. It really isn't something that's going to come naturally. Um, but one thing that I will tell you about a rally trap is that a rally trap, if done correctly, you will usually be able to soak marches no problem. Now, in my experience, the original trap that worked really, really well, all right, was the guy did 2 million tier 4 across, 
All right, and the reason why that works so well is because essentially you, you know, you're going to get hit by two million three hundred seventy-five k, and right from the start you've already mitigated it. Like the damage is almost completely on par. But then they added about two million tier two across, and then that being able to soak made it really work incredibly well. Now I think part of the problem with this trap nowadays is, you know, if if you're going to take uh, a sh you know, a, a new familiar ability that's hitting 150% of a certain unit type's attack every four seconds and it hits the largest enemy squad, you now suddenly have to be able to mitigate the damage based on what troops that you have. Now, I think really the ideal situation is to have more tier 4 than tier 2 nowadays when it comes to a rally trap. And so, for that reason, I feel like if you had like 3 million tier 4 across, even though, yeah, that's a ton of might. <laughs> The benefit of that is, that, like, literally no one's going to be able to get through that very easily. And if you have 2 million tier 2, that's about the bare minimum for a single rally. And if you want to go up to 4 million, then go to 5 million tier 4 across and then do 4 million. But I, well, what I'm always saying here is I'm always trying to keep my tier 4 on top of the tier 2 for that reason. Because what was working for a little while before the familiar update came in was that you could do, and I think it's, it really, honestly, it still works, as long as you don't go up against people that are using Mythic Champion gear and have these familiars where they're taking a portion and hitting it every four seconds, okay? But really, like, the old mechanic that I was using was I was doing six to 700,000 Tier 4 across, and then I was doing, like, five or six million Tier 2 across. And that worked fine up until just recently, where now the whole damn board game got flipped and I had to... I had to basically start from scratch. And so, like, now, if I'm going to do a rally trap, and, like, right now I'm just I'm building up to one, okay? I'm trying to build more Tier 4 than I am Tier 2 now. Because Tier 4 is strong, and it's the closest thing you have to counter what is being sent in a rally. So the more Tier 4 you have, it's going to soak better, it's going to be able to do a lot more damage. Um, and so, for a lot of different reasons, I would say the bare minimum... I think is going to be pushing two and a half million to three million now. Now I'm not saying you do you have to do it that way. You can do seven hundred thousand into two types, then do double that, like one point six million, for example, in one type. That will work just fine too. Okay, and then you do two million or so, maybe into tier two on you know across, for example, and that that will work just fine. I'm just saying that with the mythic champion players out there right now, there's a lot of uncertainty with it because now that IGG's added these new mechanics and with the familiars, it's kind of flipped it on its head because they're pushing stats that weren't really possible in the past. Like now, somebody can be pushing like 100, or 200, 300, 400 because it keeps adding on the amount of damage that they can do to that unit type. And like I was telling you earlier, I mean, I don't think Siege is going to be the option, I don't think it'll work. Um, I really think that the ideal situation in order to really make use of it is you're going to have to essentially, you know, if somebody sends range at you, I almost suggest you just start building tier 2 uh, infantry <laughs> so that your tier 2 infantry are having more troops than the other squads. And obviously, you know, one thing that is problematic no matter what you do, right, is you're never going to know that until that rally hits. A lot of the time you're going to get doubled or tripled, really. You're just going to take reps. And so part of the reason why I was building like six, seven, eight million tier two across was because I knew I was going to lose about a mil to two mil across every damn rally. I knew I was going to take reds, okay? And I was building the tier two because they were kind of cheap and easy to build. But obviously it's not that effective. Um, I know some people out there, you know, you probably think of Worthy Prince, you know, with the 13 rallies that I ate. The, the very most, like, I guess the important factor you should have always considered, regardless of who the hell you're talking about, is what were their circumstances? What kind of rally leads and what kind of troops were they sending? Were they sending 2 million, you know, tier 4, 2.3 million, you know, across every single time? Or were they sending like a mix of, you know, 60, 40, where they're doing 60% tier 4, which is 1.425 million tier 4? with an additional 950,000 tier 2, you know, because what what I'm going to say here is, is that that type of rally, right, it, it's not intended to do damage, it's just there to can knock your front line down. Like, they'll send it a couple times, it does enough damage, and then eventually your walls weaken their front lines down, and then they'll hit you when they think 
you're one front lines down, they know that they can smack you and they're going to get your tier four. Or they're going to smack you and they're going to knock you down to the point where they got that front line out and they can go to the next one without ever having to fear. But at that point, they know you're offline. You know, then that's that is kind of the mindset with that kind of 60 40 split kind of mindset. Now, I know I've told you about all of these things and I know it sounds scary and expensive and a lot of this is like bar to entry kind of things. But this is why I said it to a lot of people not too long ago was that rally traps are not really i would not pursue it <laughs> i think the bar to entry between a rain trap and a rally trap is really high okay and although a rain trap is probably going to take one or two marches i don't think you should ever take more than two rallies on a rain trap because it's just downright stupid in my opinion if you do because if you don't get the reinforcements and you don't heal in between and they're all in sync you're god you're screwed <laughs> you're gonna take reds okay you're gonna potentially get hurt really bad um, the rally traps out there that are putting six to seven hundred k across are another realm to getting hurt pretty bad, uh, depending on who's rallying. Like if it's a mythic champ, you're gonna get hurt. Um, yeah, really, I think if if you're gonna do a rally trap, you know, get get a lot of tier four in there. You know, go go two million across if you can, um, because I really think that's where it's at now. Like I think you'll do a much much better job when you have on par tier four mounts than you will any other day. Like if you have two point five mil, I think that's where you can stop. Like you don't really need to go any further, and you can give yourself a little bit, like two million tier two, and you'll be fine. Like you can soak marches and not have any problems. Um, but when it comes to gear, I think three hundred and fifty to four hundred and fifty, those are some ballpark numbers when it comes to the attack stats that I've seen people use. But they're using roughly around four hundred percent is really kind of the idea. Um, you know, with familiars, like I was telling you earlier, you know, Terra Spike, Jazik, uh, Aquarius even is really a good option because they're all dropping HP. I really think dropping HP is a big factor for traps. I really think most people should do this. Um, you know, and I, I know it's 2020. Some of you guys out there have just sat down and listened to me basically spew out all this information at you. I know you're probably a little overwhelmed. Feel free to watch back and look back on the video if you want, but... Really, what I'm trying to tell you is, and I'll, I'll make a case for it for you, okay, is that a rally trap will take about a million plus reds split across five people. That's not that deadly to the five people, okay? Five people losing maybe 100k tier four is not so bad. It's really not. Bar to entry is really easy. It makes more sense to be the rally guy than it does to be the rally trap nowadays. <laughs> okay, the rally trap, he's fighting his war and he's going to get his ass handed to him. Really, I think a rally trap is somebody that's in their last stand and they're trying to hold off and defend. But really, that, that guy should never be in that position if he doesn't have to be. Like, if you can, if you can shield, I really think you should. <laughs> it makes more sense to shield. Unless you just want to say, you know, you just want to lose some troops, but have a big, you know... Uh, rebellion against the guy that you just really don't like or maybe it's the emperor and you just want to be you know you want to say hey look i can take your 40 rallies you know <laughs> that's your thing hey no problem but um you know it's just i i will point out right that if if you are going to do a rally trap and stuff like that, that that's the gist of that right um but where i think with like a solo trap a griffin trap and a garrison trap they're taking a million plus reds off of one person and they can do it so easily because it's, you know, three, four, five marches at 375k. Okay, two marches, you fill an infirm every march afterwards. You're going to take reds, okay? And that's not, like, negotiable. That's just pure dead. Like, there's nothing they can do about it. And griffin traps have it best because they can go on an island, wait until all the marches show up, and then they pull their troops and they random it. Literally anybody can do that. <laughs> you know, you could be 700 mil and you can do it. I promise. I've done it. <laughs> okay? Um... But even somebody is, you know, a solo trap can do this too. And, and this is why I'm going to just kind of briefly go over what I call hybrid trapping. Okay, which is that I think, you know, I, I know I never mentioned this, right? But there's the Noceros trap and the wall trap. I don't like wall trapping as much as I used to. You know, I'm going to say that wall traps work in the fact that you can block them. You can block somebody from hitting you. Like, somebody that's just starting out and has tier 4 units, I literally watched in the last episode, okay, this guy was hitting my wall, and he could not do it. I had 74 wall health, but because my wall defense was so high, he could not hit my wall. He could not break through it unless he had siege. And even if he had siege, he could not have a tanny amount either. He had to, like, have more than twenty-five to 30,000 siege. 15k ain't gonna cut it, <laughs> okay? 
And so I, I bring that up because that is a pretty important and powerful ability that wall traps have, right? But the thing is, is that the cost that it takes on you to build to a wall that's that good is like doing tier four research. It's expensive. It takes a lot of damn time. And then on top of that, those traps are expensive, okay? And they are a pain in the, in the butt to heal, okay? And I don't like it for that reason. Like, for what you get out of it and how many you kill, I don't like it. it it's just not my thing anymore. I quit doing it pretty fast because it's just the cost of entry sucks. It just is. And then when you finally get there, it still sucks. <laughs> but that isn't to say that you can't take what you get in a wall trap and, a, and you can use it in something like a griffin trap if you want to do. You know, you could build a wall, force them have to send siege at you. You know, like, I think it's funny when you're a rally trap, somebody tries to solo you out, you know, as like, and they, they hit a wall and they can't get through. You know, they're trying to knock your wall down. They can't. <laughs> They, you know, they want to get that initial wall down so they can then start sending rallies, and they're like panicking because they cannot do it the way they normally would, you know. But that's that's the one thing with that. A Noceros trap, on the other hand, is a little a little less known idea, but really, I'll give you kind of a mishmash of ideas that I've used that are kind of funny to do. So, like a Noceros trap, right? You Basically, you got your troops on um, some level 5 tiles, for example. Somebody ports over during KVK and says, I'm going to solo that. So they send a solo. And then what you do is you use your Noceros ability and pull your troops back. And then what I do is I would pop your Griffin ability to pull your troops back as soon as possible. Then pour it on the spot if, you, if there's enough time. Obviously, depending on how fast they're sending it. Like if it's a 10, 20 second march, this isn't going to take you very long. Right? If you've got enough time, because then you can pull your troops back, pour it on that place where the gathering tile used to be, and then random. But there's a lot of time in between there. So an Ostra Trap doesn't really work that well, okay? But it isn't to say that you couldn't have a buddy of yours port and then random, <laughs> okay? And this is this is really the trick a lot of the time, is that you pull your, your, your tile and then somebody ports and then they random. And that's why an Ostra Trap is kind of fun to do. Um, you know, so it's really great when you're working with guildmates and stuff like that to really do a, you know, to do that well. Um, now, like, you know, I, I think something else that I, I, I've briefly done and didn't really say much about was, like, I was doing a, a hybrid mix of a rally trap and a griffin trap. So I was emptying out all of my troops as far as tier four goes. And I have, like, all of the army sizes at this moment so i can go up to as far as eight eight times 375k you're getting close to three million troops that you can hide away pretty easy right and so what i did is i would hide all of my tier four all three million i would put like about you know like i think i was doing a lot of the time i was doing like a you know almost a complete blend of all you know tier four cav or tier four range like i was splitting it across two types hiding all the tier four in there right and so I was hiding a really good chunk of it, which, you know, that's about a million in the first two. And then the million or so tier one that I, or tier two I had, I would hide there as well. Okay. And then the extra million that I needed, I was going to get that from reinforcements. You know, so I would wait until somebody was hitting me just like you would with a griffin trap, pull. And then if I wanted to, um, once that happened, somebody will get their leader capped. And I would put my anti scout on, and I would wait until somebody wanted to rally me. A lot of the time, these people that rally are not very good, and if they are, then I shield and say, "Hell, the hell with it! I'm not going to do it." But <laughs> when I have that kind of composition, right? I have two types. There's only two types of targets I'm going to take, and like I was telling you earlier, I don't like taking same type rallies if I don't have to. Um, but if I know the rally lead's going to send calf, and I've got range. So at that point, I know I've got a million tier four range and a million tier two range. At that point, I'll ask for a million tier two range reinforcements. And now essentially I've done exactly what a normal trap would do. Uh, and I can essentially mitigate the damage that way, but I'm also able to soak a march and counter it. But that's the key. I have to counter. If I can't counter, I ain't doing it. <laughs> like that's that's kind of why uh, I, I quit doing a Griffin Rally Trap pretty fast. Um, and at Griffin Rally Traps, you know, even in theory, you can uh, uh, you can also do it in reverse, where like maybe you just have all your tier two hidden away, 
and I did that for a little while, so I was hiding my tier 2. So I would hide 3 million tier 2 away, and it just looked like I had tier 4, and people would go, Oh yeah, sure, I'll just rally that, and they would rally it, and then I'd suddenly reappear with tier 2, and they'd go, Oh, what the hell? <laughs> and so I would soak the rally, and they're like, What the hell, man, I didn't see your tier 2, like, where did that come from? That's another way to get a little bit smarter than, you know, the average Joe, at, like, at least when you're wanting to try and trap people, okay? Um, no, you know, so... For everything that I've told you so far, though, hopefully the, this video was helpful. I know I was, I've been talking for quite some time, and if you haven't watched the whole entire video and you've just skipped to the end now, I understand totally, but <laughs> feel free to learn some information in the back if you want to. Um, but to go over in summary of just some of the major points that I want to make sure you guys know is that you have to stay in counter. You want to probably have 300% or higher in stats, regardless of what trap you are. You should probably get familiars that drop HP, and you should probably get a uh, um, Pyrus for the squad attack, and your squad leaders are very important, so don't, uh, how do you say, don't, like, if you can control that, control it. Squad attack is very powerful. It's something that I think a lot of people ignore and don't pay much attention to, but believe me, it's a super powerful thing that if you can use it, do it. Um, but otherwise, really, at the end of the day, uh, with these five different traps, including the other two at the end, um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, with these tactics that I've told you, you can combine and mix and match these as much as you like. Um, some things that I will say is that some army heroes like Berserker, Lore Weaver, um, even like using something like, oh, oh I don't know, what, what was that? Songstress of the Sea, I mean... Most of your army heroes are all good choices, but I say that when you have the option between heroes that give 50% HP into a unit type and then 30% attack, pick those, because uh, you're going to have a little bit more out of it. Um, because again, you know, fundamentally, I've like I've been telling you earlier, you know, if you do a mix set that's going to be even, it's great for solo traps, it's okay for, you know, starter players, but when you get to the late game and you're doing griffin traps or alley traps, you probably shouldn't do a mix set if you don't have to. Two type sets will do better. Um, mix, you know, one type sets are best. Uh, and for that reason, that's how I go about it. Um, you know, between the phalanx and the wedge, uh, just as I was saying, read it from right to left. Um, so if you're going to do infantry, use infantry front, like wedge, for example, is going to switch out which unit types come first. And so you always want to make sure that the first two types that are, you know, from right to left, you want to make sure that you've got buffer for those, because they're the ones that will usually take hits. The ones in the back usually don't. Um, and of course, the only exception to that rule is now with the new expensive paid familiars um, that are attacking the largest enemy squads. I mean, like I was saying earlier, if you can make advantage of that, you should. Um, I think you'll be able to benefit from that considerably. Um, but for the most part, that's pretty much the gist on that whole subject. I know it's been a while. Um, for those of you guys who've been subscribed to the channel, I really appreciate you guys. Um, it's been a really hell of a year. Uh, I know I haven't been uploading very often. I am so sorry for that. I mean, it's been it's been a hell of a busy time. I've just I've been really busy. <laughs> so I just thought I'd make those really long dialogue on on traps because I've I've seen so many traps out there right now that are you know some of them fall flat, some of them do well. I mean, I know Ryan recently got, you know, some pretty terrible reds. I've seen some some really great wins from KPG Games. Uh, Worthy Prince is obviously doing pretty well with his rally trap, but he's also done just as well as a rally lead. Um, and I really think in 2020, I mean, I, I really think for a lot of you guys out there that are just starting out, I really think the game is shifting towards uh, rally leads. I think the people that are joining the rallies, are getting more out of this than the people that are trying to trap. And I think as the game progresses, I really do think that that's going to be the late game kind of thing anyway. Um, because really, the guys that are getting access to points in the Dragon Arena and people that are getting access to Baron and, and the Battle Royale, I think there's a lot of benefits to that. You know, And I, I think it's stuff that you definitely want to consider, but you know, obviously to one's own wallet, right? <laughs> you know, If you can't afford it and you're playing free-to-play, you know, hey, look, I totally understand that. Um, Obviously, what I've told you so far, this is really coming from somebody that is a pay-to-play spender. So, I'm not going to tell you that you know what, what I've done here is a free-to-play perspective because by no means it is, not even remotely. But 
I can tell you that, uh, you know, I've, I've tested everything that I've suggested to you so far. I know that it works. Um, I've done all of these traps in my experience. You can feel free to look at all. I have countless numbers of videos I've done on my channel, but I've adjusted them according to the new specs and new changes with the updates. Um, so this is kind of my new up-to-date guide over the whole channel as far as you know trapping goes i know it's been a while but i mean for the most part anyway with the numbers that i gave you these are kind of the guidelines that you want to follow and hopefully i've taught you a thing or two and if you have let me know in the comment section below um if you have any questions feel free to ask me i'll, I'll more than happy to tell you just about anything that i know off the top of my head uh, but otherwise thank you guys for coming and i'll see you guys next time